Good morning. It is time for our responsive reading. This is the sixth Sunday in Eastertide. If you have your hymn book, it's on page 35. It's the sixth Sunday in Eastertide. Sing it for you, And we got some Miss Sigma. What was he saying? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, the choir was sitting down and everything. This responsive reading is the sixth Sunday in Eastertide. It's the sixth Sunday morning in Eastertide on page 35. The scripture is coming from 1 John, the fifth chapter, the first through the fifth verse and the eleventh verse. It might be the second 35. When you found it, could you please say amen? Amen. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God together. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Amen. Amen. Now you may be seated. <laughs> and next week, um, next week we'll we'll start a series on um, what happens after you do the responsive reading. Because in a Methodist church, after you do the responsive reading, they have a a praise called the Gloria Patri. Okay, it's a Latin word that that represents what the angels said to. When they found out that Jesus was going to be born, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to where it will. And so the glory part, do you remember? Glory be to the Father, and remember, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And then it says, and as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be. And then world without end. Amen. Okay, and then following the glory part, we will do the Apostles' Creed, and we'll do a teaching on that. And because we haven't done it in a number of years, so... We'll get back to understanding what the Apostles' Creed is and what we believe and, and all the statements that, that are taken within the Apostles' Creed. But now we're going to have um, um, Sister Pam Hardy. She's going to come and read our scripture. And then Pandora is going to lead us in our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Follow me that. Yes. You can come on over up here, Pam. Good morning, church family. Today I will be reading from Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. Please say amen when you found it. Page 505. Page 505. I thought that was the hymn. You told me that was the hymn number. I I got this assignment walking in, so give me some grace. (laughs) Do you all have Isaiah 40, 1 through 5? Amen. God... Cover me as I do this reading. Comfort for God's people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, 
that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill be made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Good morning, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. May we bow our heads. Father God, once again, coming to you in the humblest way we know how, thanking you for another day, Father God. Thank you for all your grace and mercy, Father God, Father God. As they travel, whoever travels in town to see them visit their mothers, Father God, give them traveling mercy back, Father God. Father God, I just want to thank you for everything you have done, everything you continue to do. Father God, just bless the whole world, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Makes no difference what the problem. I can go to God in prayer. Yes, I have this blessed assurance. I can go to God in prayer. He will take my gloom and sorrow and turn it into life. He will comfort. Strengthen and keep me. Yeah. I can call to God in prayer. I can call, I can call when, I him. when I need Him. Father, Father up, up in heaven, I can go, I can go to, to God in prayer. I can go. Sometimes my weight is very heavy. Yeah. I know someone who is so faithful. He will take my gloom and sorrow and turn it into He will comfort, strengthen and keep me. Yeah. I can, I can call him when I need him. I need him. Father, Father up in heaven, heaven, I can go, I can go to God in prayer. I can go, I can go to God in prayer. Well, sometimes my burdens get so heavy. Yeah. So faithful, he will take my gloom and sorrow and turn it into he will comfort, strengthen, and keep me. 
Choose to work it out. 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 Oh. I get calling. I need him. Father, up in heaven, I can go to God in prayer. I can go to God in prayer. I can go, go to God in So while you were trying to figure it out, the Lord already worked it out. Uh, any witnesses in the house? And while I was trying to figure it out, while I was trying to work it out, I was trying to pray it out. But God already. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, sir. God already worked it out. Wow. Um, we're going to have um, Keisha lead us in our announcement, but just before she do that, I want to recognize um, a couple people. Mainly, I want to recognize Tough T. Tough T. Can you stand up for a second? Tough T. Tough T. Teresa, she's a double amputee. Wow. And look at God. Look at God. Look at God. And so we're just glad when she when she walked in the door, I went, hey! I was just, man, I was, I because see, when, when you see, listen, I don't know about you, but when when I see God do stuff, man, when I when I watch God take you from in a bed, now you're standing up and walking on two amputees later. When I see God do stuff like that, I can't help but say, hey, hey God, hey God. Yes, do you will, God. Oh, what a mighty God. Whoa, boy. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All right, um, Keisha, come on before I run up here. It's so crazy. Thank you, God. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Clifford Barnett Sr., our First Lady, and the members of Warner Temple, we welcome you to this service. Whether you are in person or watching us online, we are glad that you have joined us this morning. The announcements for today are as follows. Christian Sympathy is extended to James McDuffie and Karen McIntyre and their entire family on the loss of his daughter. Children and Youth Choir Rehearsal will be held on Thursday, May 25th and that will begin at 6.30 p.m. Eden Village Home Team Training will be held on Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, and that will be held at the Eden Village office. On Saturday, May 27th at Independence Mall, the Wilmington District Missionary Children and Youth will host Walk a Mile for a Second Mile event, and this is in honor of Tiny But Mighty Dahlia, at Independence Mall at 10 a.m. Um, or at St. Mark AME Zion Church in Whiteville, NC. All proceeds will go towards Dahlia's medical expenses. Wilmington District Sunday School Convention will be held on Saturday, June 3rd, 2023 at 9 a.m. and that will be held at St. James in Southport. Graduate Sunday is rapidly approaching. That will be on Sunday, June 11th. Warner Temple wants to honor all seniors in high school college and graduate schools please leave your name in the church office and we have two um, recent graduates 
from UNCW. Congratulations, wings up. <laughs> On Sunday, June 11, 2023, from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., the Juneteenth Gospel Festival will be held at Wilson Middle School Auditorium. And this is a free event. And last but certainly not least, we are working towards burning our mortgage. So please, if you have not made your pledge, do so already. And um, you can get the cards from there in the fellowship hall. So if you have not made your pledge, please do so. We are we are not hoping that we will. We know that we will burn our mortgage on Sunday, October 15th. These are all the announcements that I have for this morning. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And if you missed anything, please follow us on our social media and uh, co or contact your class leader. Have a great day. Sharing those announcements, we hope and pray that you'll bear them in mind. This is the day that God has made. Anybody just glad to be alive? Wow. We're glad that you're alive. And happy Mother's Day to all of you. We're glad to see all of our guests and our visitors. Um, and I'm sure you'll hear from them a little bit later on. But thank you guys for being here. May God continue to bless you. Um, just excited about all that God is doing in our lives. All that he's doing in our lives. What an awesome God we serve. Okay, if you are under 18 and not married... Please come to the front. Children's church, quickly, quickly. Under 18 and not married. Now, if you're married, you can stay in your seat. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Boom. Good morning. What's that? You good? All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow. Good morning. Come on, dear. Come on, come on, come on. You guys are good. Come on. We got you. Good morning. Can I have a high five? Hey, man. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. We got them all? Good morning. Wait, let's try it again. Wait, let's try it again. See, I'm, I'm from the old, old school. Like when a person says good morning to you, you kind of like say good morning back. Okay? Let's try it. You ready? Let's try it. Let's try it. See how it works. Let's see how it works. Ready? Good morning. I like it. That, that, that doesn't sound better. I love it like that. Okay. Now, listen, I got two things I'm going to ask you. And it's not about how well you're doing in school or how well you're doing at home. The point thing, first thing I want to ask you is what is today? Sunday and it's Mother's Day. Okay. And how many of you know at least one or two things you could do that would make your mom happy? Anybody? Uh-oh. I see some people looking away. I see some people like looking at our world. Do you know? Uh, do you know? It? Help me out. Help me out. Anybody know one or two things that you could do that make your mom happy? One or two things. Just one or two things. Wow. Let us pray, dear Heavenly Father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Here's the thing. If you know one or two things that will make your mom happy, why don't you do them? Okay, like a birthday card? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can cook breakfast for them. You are all right, girl. You got some good gifts. She said we can cook breakfast for them. Sure. Okay, so watch. I think sometimes, even though we know to do the right thing, sometimes it's kind of hard in our mind. So here's what I want to give you some secret. Watch. If you ask God to help you, God will help you to do the good thing. Am I right, older people? Am I right? He will. He'll help you. He'll help you do the right thing. That's called the Holy Spirit living in us. And so this is what I want, you, I want to challenge you this week. If you think of something good that you should do for somebody, or especially your mom or, or your dad, <coughs> um, I want you to do it. And if you find like that, man, that's hard. Like, I, mean, I don't know if I should do it. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask God in you to help you. Okay? Now, this is what I'd like for you to do. I want you to help me with something. Um, if you are a mother, would you please stand? Because we have a gift for you, and I'm going to ask our kids to help pass out the gifts. If you're a mother, please stand. And what I want you to do, guys. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. We've got um, a nice um, 
candle thing. It's a candle thing. You can get a little, you know, something on the south and everything like that. So here's what I need you to do. I want you guys to help me to take one and pass them out to every mother that's standing. Okay? Can you do it? Can you help me with that? All right. Thank you. Oh, and, and by the way, if you're okay, and parents, if you're okay, when they hand it to you, could you give them a hug and say Happy Mother's Day? If it's okay, if it's okay, okay? If the person says, don't touch me, then don't do it, okay? <laughs> All right, you ready? All right, here we go. I need you to help me. Ready? Go. Take one, pass them out to Tina. Go. Take one, pass them out to Tina. All right, here we go. Here we go. Take one, go back. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. Go. All right. Go quickly. Go up in the front with those people. And then go quickly. And those that are still standing, here, give those two. We'll give them. All right, now, those of you that are still standing, I got good news for you and I got bad news. All right, which one you want first? The good, the, the bad first, the bad first. Okay, we ordered 96 of those, and they kept, they come in two boxes. Box one showed up, box two is supposed to come tomorrow. So if you're standing up, that means you win the prize with... Did you get my stickers? Come on. So if you're standing up, I'm going to give you a sticker instead of the candle because on tomorrow we'll get the candles and we'll get them to you. Is that okay? Now, you're not mad or anything. Okay. I see those people that stand. If you're mad now, just fuss at somebody else. Don't fuss at me. All right. Here. Come on. Help me. So take one of the stickers. Make sure you get one. Pass them. Make sure you get one. Pass one to the people over there. Get one behind you. Couple behind you. All right. Yeah, take take a couple stickers and give them to the people that are standing up. There you go. Miss Joy, did you get one? Good. All right, we'll 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 get you one. All right. There you go. Now, and I promise you, um, we got the the message that they were supposed to be in like two days ago, and then they started you know, hassle another day is not coming, not coming, but we will definitely get them to you, okay? We'll get them to you this week, I promise. Amen. All right. Thank you, Miss Gracie, for helping us. All right. All right. All right, come on back, and we're going to pray. Now, listen. So, remember, watch. If, if you want to do something good and you find it hard to do, if you ask God to help you, God will help you. That's what he does. That's what the Holy Spirit is all about, is to help us. Where's Gracie? Okay, go. Stand right there. I was looking for you, man. I didn't know where you was. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for reminding us that if we want to do something good, and we find it kind of hard to do, that all I have to do is ask you to help me. 
and you will. So God bless our mothers. Thank you for all that they do in our lives. Keep them in your care. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Help me sing. She can hold on to him. Thank you, Gracie. Everybody give Gracie a hand. That's my girl. <laughs> All right. Um, our speaker for this morning is the Reverend Lynette Artis. Now, and I did her like I do some folks around here. I'll just like call you and say, hey, by the way, you're speaking Sunday at 9.30. She goes, <gasps> well, Lynette is the mother of Terry. And so she was here yesterday because Terry, as well as Gabrielle Gabby, graduated from the University of North Carolina Wilmington. Terry got his bachelor's and Gabby got her master's. Is that awesome? Is that awesome? And, of course, we'll be celebrating them on June the 11th, all of our graduates. And I'm going to remind you, if you have a graduate, to make sure you get us their name. And we want three pictures, a picture of something in a cap and gown, um, a baby picture, and then a picture of your choosing. I saw um, um, Angel. I saw Angel this Thursday. She was participating in the Special Olympics event. And Angel will be graduating this year. So I'm as, that's, that's crazy, isn't that? That is just crazy. That is just crazy. So the speaker for, the, um, for this Mother's Day is Reverend Lynette Arden. She's a, uh, an assistant minister at Moses, Moses Temple in um, Jacksonville, a member of the AME Zion Church. And we're just honored that she has come to present to us what God has placed on her heart. As she comes, would you sit prayerfully and that God might in his miraculous way use her to minister to us. Keep you near the 
cross and may our struggles show that you need God and may our battles and the
towards me your loving kindness for me your tender mercy I see day after day forever thankful for me you're always providing for me your grace and mercy I see day after day great is your mercy i see your loving kindness for me your tender mercy i see day after day Forever faithful to me, you're always providing for me. Your grace and mercy I see day after day. because he is the Alpha and the Omega. Because uh, we live by his grace and mercy every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Woo. Thank you, God. Mm. Woo. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. I give honor to God and thank him for being here today. I want to thank Pastor Barnett for inviting me to come today. I also greet First Lady Mrs. Barnett, all the ministers in Warner Temple, and my family, my sons and my dad who are here in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all mothers and that being a mother isn't easy. But it is beautiful. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for who you are, for being God all by yourself, Father. Lord, right now I ask, God, that you gather in our wondering thoughts and let us place them on you, Father. Lord, as your word goes forth, Father. Lord, I humbly ask that you move me out of the way, Father. Speak to me and through me, Father, that your words are received. Your words are heard. Your words are planted and take root, God. Lord, that we don't leave the same way we came in. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture was read earlier, and I'll be coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reading out of the NIV version. And it reads, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, meaning the conflict is over. That her iniquity is pardoned means forgiven. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. As we go through life's journey, striving to do the will of God, 
we must remember that as children of God, no matter where we may find ourselves, what circumstances come our way, or whatever we may have to face, that God is faithful and that his promises will always come forth in his time and his word will not return unto him void. If I may use as a subject, God's promises shall come to pass. Each of us must get that in our spirit and occasionally remind ourselves of that fact on this life's journey. In order to do this, we must realize and understand that one, endurance has a purpose. Two, God will step in, take control, and have the final say. Three, all will see God's hand at work. This text was written by the prophet Isaiah to the Israelites. As they were in exile, they were encouraged by these words. They were assured and had hope, knowing that although they were in a strange land, and in captivity, that God would keep them and in time fulfill the promise he had made to them to bring them out. Here in verses 1 and 2, which reads, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem. Cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. This lets us know that although we have to go through storms, face various difficulties and struggles, be chastised and even feel as if we're in a place that is foreign and strange to us. All of it is to either draw us to God, draw us back to God, or draw us even closer to God. What we have to endure has a purpose in the plan of God. As he works on us and in us and through us, his purpose is being fulfilled as we go stronger in him continually leaning and depending on him as we can do nothing in our own strength and by faith trust him at his word in every situation at his word in every situation ah the scripture says that her warfare is accomplished meaning the conflict is over and that her sins are forgiven god wants us to understand as his children to understand that through it all our ups and our downs our rights and our wrongs, that he will bring it all on one accord in due season. James 1, 2 through 4 tells us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. We're supposed to consider it pure joy. Do we all the time? No, we do not. But when we face trials, not if you face trials, but may face trials, but whenever you face trials, because trials will come. But remember that as they come, they build our endurance. And it tests our faith to see where we, if we are where we say we are in Christ. That it may finish its perfect work. That we may be mature and complete in Christ, not lacking anything. Once we know and understand that we mu- what we must endure has a purpose, it enables us to let go of self and take our hands completely off the situation. Yield to God and let him have his way. Knowing that all that we have to go through the challenges and face various difficulties and struggles and be brought back in order numerous times and feel as if we're in a place that is uncomfortable or unpleasant, God is at work in everything and God does not waste anything. Every tear, every heartache, every setback, he sees those tears and will dry those tears. He will heal that heartache, and he will show that what appeared to be a setback to the world was just a setup for his promises to come forth and his glory be seen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding. To trust in the Lord with all of our heart, not just giving him some things, but give him everything and not to lean to our own understanding because our own understanding is the comfort way out. 
but to lean unto his understanding. And in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. Because our path will be the short and quick way. But his way is the way that will build our character in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of Christ's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Through it all, God wants us to know that it is, it is his good and perfect, pleasing will and motion, no matter what we face, and that it is not to harm or to destroy or to discourage us. Amen. Amen. Reading further in the text in verses 3 and 4 says, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the, the way, the desert and the highway of our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. When we yield or submit to God and allow him to take complete control, our hearts, minds, and spirits are being transformed by the watering of the word of God, preparing the way for God to do what he said he would do. As we face our mountains and hills, we must be, as God told Joshua, strong and courageous, walking by faith with purpose in every step, moving toward the mountain, may not know if it's going to move on our own strength, but trusting God at his word, and he will make the mountains and hills low before us, allowing us to overcome them. When we find ourselves walking down roads that seem so twisted and crooked that it may seem as if we're lost in the maze of life. But when we look up to him, to where all our help comes from, following him as he leads and directs us through, we begin to take notice that he has made everything straight, and we can clearly see and focus on the road ahead. Rough situations we must face with humility, allowing God to fight our battles. He will make them smooth as he moves on our behalf, bringing peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. Knowing that endurance has a purpose in the plan of God, and that by yielding and surrendering completely to his will, it prepares the way for God to take control and fulfill the promises he has made. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 states, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh will see it together, mm -hmm. for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Take a moment to remember all the promises God has spoken to you and maybe even speaking to you at this very moment. Now think on the ones that have come to pass. As you await the ones that haven't came yet, continue to remember that all you have faced to get to this point. With God before you, leading and guiding you, beside you, comforting and encouraging you, behind you, at times carrying you, and at other times giving you the push you need to keep moving forward in him. Most importantly, God above you, hallelujah, when you couldn't do anything but stand still to see the salvation of the Lord, hallelujah, and God below you to steady the ground when things were uncertain and shaky. God wants to remind us through eight, Romans 8 and 28 that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God wants us to know and understand that there is a reason why we must face difficulty and that in all we must endure, endurance has a purpose. We realize and surrender when we realize as we surrender to God, giving everything to him, he will step in yes, and will. take control so his glory will be revealed in the lives of his children so all flesh will see that what he has spoken come to pass. We will have a testimony to share with others about who God is and what he has done for us as our lives will be a physical representation of a spiritual God in action and his glory revealed. God's promises shall come to pass. 
Amen. 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 Good word. Good word for us. That God's promises will come to pass. What a mighty God we serve. We thank God for the message. We thank God for the messenger. And so as we prepare to offer you an invitation to Christian discipleship, maybe while we're here, God has spoken to you. And God has said, maybe today is the day that you want to make it right with him. And so the Bible says that he does this. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone would hear my voice, all they have to do is open the door and I'll come in. Okay. So if you want to give your life to the Lord, today is a great day to do that. You remember I said to the kids that um, if you find yourself wanting to do something good and it's hard, anybody ever been there? Yeah. I mean, for real, you ever been there before where you want to do something good and it's hard? Well, Paul talked about that in Romans chapter 7 where he says, even when I want to do good, Evil is always present. And yet, how, how can then I do in this body? How can I do the good thing? He says, oh, through Jesus. Through a relationship with Jesus. I can ask him to help me. And he'll help me to get through. So he'll help me to endure. He'll help me to get to the next day. So if you want to give your life to the Lord, today's a great day. If you're here by chance and you've already given your life to him, and you want to maybe take this day to make this church your church home, we'd love for you to come. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll pray for all of the mothers. We'll pray for mothers present, mothers gone on to glory. And we can do that from where you are, too. We'll do that. You know, you can come to the altar if you choose to. But if you choose to stand where you are, we'll do that as well. So would you stand? And if God is speaking to you, would you stand to your feet? And if God is speaking to you, first of all, would you come? If you want to make this your church home, we'd love for you to come. Or, or even if by chance there's something you want to pray for, we'd love for you to come. All right? Come on, Brother Nate. When your spirit speaks to me, would you come? Whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Turn around, bro. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yeah. God has blessed us this morning we have with us brother Nate Pringle now, Brother Nate Pringle um, came to us by way of Sunday school. When we were in Zoom and you couldn't meet, he would join in our Sunday school group, and he's kind of been hanging around a little bit. And um, he said to me, Pastor, I want to become a member of this body. Is that awesome? Look at God. Look at God. And what I, what I know about God is that God will draw whatever the congregation needs. That's the kind of God we serve. So we're excited to have him. Um, we're going to a new members class. Your class lead will be Sister Veronica Carter because they, they were friends and that's how we got connected. And so that's why Gail and everybody turned around and said, that's Nate, that's Nate. Because we are excited. Anybody glad to have him? Man, yes! Yes, God! Yes, God! Yes, God! So I'm going to pray for Nate and welcome him to the Warner Temple. He'll be a um, Member on probation, we'll have a class where we'll talk to him about what it means to become a member of this church and how you grow in the Lord, okay? And then I want to pray for mothers, okay? If you feel comfortable, would you just elbow the person next to you? Because my, 
my health person said you don't hold hands. Just kind of elbow the person next to you. And let's pray. Let's pray. Turn this way, buddy. Let's pray. God, here we are. God, we thank you for bringing the godly man to Warner Temple. Man. Um, a man who, um, who started out in a, in a Sunday school class. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Wanting to know the word and knowing the word and studying the word. And we thank you, God, for just allowing him to find this to be his church home. We pray that you'll bless him, bless his family, keep him in the palm of your hands. We thank you, God, for the contribution that he's already made to Warner, but also what he will make in the future. Now we're a better church. We're, we're, we're ready to fight even stronger and harder now because you've added one to the number. And then, Father, I pray for every mother under the sound of my voice. God, I pray that as we elbow to elbow that you bless the elbow that we're touching right now. God, I pray because you, you know where they are in the process. You, you know where they are in the endurance piece. You know where they are in the side of going up the mountain. And you know, God, where we are with all the things that life has thrown our way. But God, just like Tough T reminds us, we, we, we're here. I'm still standing, God. Hey! I'm still standing, God. We're we're still standing. We thank you, God, for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. And then, God, we pray for those whose mothers are, are going on to be with you. God, we pray that you will continue to hold them in the palm of your hand. Bless those who may be struggling right now with this, this celebration, the whole day. God, but you, you, you can give us what we need. So that's what we ask you, God, not... Not for the tomorrow or next week or next month, but God, grant us today what we need for your glory. And God, continue to hold us in your hands and we'll forever give you the praise. Matter of fact, God, I'm going to stop touching my elbow for a moment and I'm just going to praise you right now. I, I said, I'm just going to praise you right now. I'm going to thank you right now, God, because you are an awesome God. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord. I'll say, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll look, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Thank you, God. So as we end this day of worship, we end it like we began, remember? We brought light into the sanctuary, which symbolizes his presence. We bow to the cross in reverence to the Savior who gave his life for us on it. We lit two candles. The candle on the right represented Jesus coming in the flesh, and the candle on the left represents Jesus coming as the only begotten Son of God. But did you notice Nina, before she extinguishes the candle, she lights her candle lighter. And see, that symbol says, now God, when I dismiss you from this place, I want to take you with me. I need to take you with me at home. I need to take you with me on my job. I need to take you with me if I have to go by the hospital and we'll ask you to pray for Sister Evelyn, who is um, in the hospital right now as we speak. Um, she went in on Friday. But understand, she may be coming home today, Miss Evelyn Fennell. So we'll remember her in our closing prayer. And all the others that are sick and bereaved um, among us and around us, pray that you will um, love your moms, love the mothers in your lives, the people that have been there for you. 
Pray for those who may be struggling even right now. So, God, here we are again. We are lift up Sister Evelyn to you because she called us earlier this morning and said, oh, yeah, remember, remember to pray for me. And, um, God, we want to remember her even right now. But, God, she's not the only one in hospitals. There are others in other rooms in hospitals. And then there are those who may be sick at home. We pray, God, that you will continue to be a healer. God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Now, bless us the rest of this day. May we celebrate moms and just celebrate family and enjoy one another. For now unto him who is able. He's able to keep you from falling, and he's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Having now entered to worship, depart and serve. God bless you. <laughs>